In this video, we're going to make the pattern for a conical shape two different ways. The methods are Tin Smith's rules of thumb, but the methods probably go back to Greek mathematicians. The formula for the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r, and that's basically 2 times 3 times the radius, and you'll see that's used in both these methods. You don't need to know the math, and there are no calculations or measurements uh, using a ruler involved here. This is my workspace, and I probably have more tools than you do. If you have a straight edge and a compass, you'll be fine. If you don't have a compass, you can use the second method that I'm going to show you. I always start off freehand drawing cone shapes, and then I will grab a straight edge and make my lines a little bit more decisive. You'll also see me extend the center line of the cone shape past the shape itself because I need to find the intersection where the diagonal of the cone meets the center line. That's the point from which I'll measure. Set one end of the compass at the intersection of the center line and the diagonal line and go along the diagonal to the far end of the shape. You always measure along the diagonal. I want to save my sketch, so I'm going to draw the pattern away from the sketch. Find a spot where you can draw the large arc, and then mark the center line of your circle because you're going to need that again. Measure to the other end of your cone, and then draw this arc from the same center line you used last time. Here I'm marking it so I can find it easier. Next, draw a line from the center point through both of the arcs that you've drawn. This is one end of your pattern. Measure the radius of the larger circle. I use the larger one because I think it's a little bit more accurate. This may be confusing to you because there's no circle there. You just have to remember that the end of that drawing is a circle. Then step off that radius six times along the arc. Make sure you choose the same arc that you measured from. Next, draw a line from the center point through that mark. This may seem confusing, but the whole process took me less than two minutes. Once you do this a couple of times, it's pretty straightforward. The next step is to cut out the pattern and compare it to your drawing. I oftentimes use a X-Acto knife just because it's faster than using a pair of scissors, but you can use anything you have. I'll cut right on the line as if I'm going to use this pattern to transfer to a piece of clay or a sheet of metal. For what we're doing, you don't need to be super exact, we just need to get the idea across here. When I make patterns that I intend to use on clay, I always tape the patterns together first to make sure that I didn't make any simple errors along the way. So that's what I'll do here. I'll get some tape and turn this pattern back into a cone shape. Looks good. In the next video, I'll make a pattern directly from the shape that I sketch. So I'll sketch out a cone and then cut it out. I'm not even going to use a straight edge. I'm just going to cut out my drawing. This is kind of an approximation of what I just did with the drafting tools, and it's close enough for simple forms, especially when you're working with clay, because you can stretch clay to make it fit. Now I'll trace that shape three times, and this will give me the correct circumference for my pattern. Before, I measured six times the radius. Here, I'm measuring three times the diameter. That's the same thing.
You could just cut out this faceted form, but I'm going to turn it back into a cone shape by drawing arcs to connect the points. I'm usually better at cutting curves with a knife than I am with a pencil. The pencil lines do help get me started, though. Just like before, I'll tape my shape together and see if it looks like my sketch. So that's two ways to make the pattern for a cone shape.